With the CDC potentially changing language on what it means to be fully vaccinated, it's time to ask ourselves, what does this mean for cruising? Carnival Cruise Lines is in the news as they're bringing another ship back online here in Central Florida. Plus, they're also looking at some $10 testing options at the port. And there's sad news to report on as a crew member has tragically passed away. All this coming up on Midships. Hey, hey, welcome to the Midships YouTube channel. I'm your Captain Corey, and thank you so much for stopping by the channel today. Well, we're just seven days away now from my cruise aboard the Carnival Liberty, and that got me thinking, is the Liberty actually making news right now? I really think it is. Let's learn more from CruiseHype.com. Carnival cruise ship back at home in Port Canaveral by Melissa Meantz. After nearly two years away, including a stint covering itineraries for the Carnival Horizon, Carnival Liberty has resumed sailings from Port Canaveral. The Conquest-class ship is back to the itineraries that she does best, short cruises down to the Bahamas, offering a variety of port calls. The Liberty is setting sail from Port Canaveral today on a four-night Bahamas cruise. The first day will be a fun day at sea, followed by calls in Nassau and Bimini before returning to Canaveral. Carnival Liberty has been out of service since the industry-wide shutdown began back in March of 2020. She was originally supposed to resume operations from Port Canaveral on February 1st, but was recalled early to help cover itineraries for the Carnival Horizon when that ship had technical difficulties that required it to go to an emergency dry dock. And the Liberty joins the Elation, the Magic, and the Mardi Gras cruising out of Port Canaveral. And since we're talking about Carnival Cruise Line, they've actually recently come out and announced they're going to explore some COVID testing options at the pier that don't cost a hundred bucks like they do today. Let's learn a little bit more from Doug Parker at cruiseradio.net. Carnival explores $10 COVID testing options for shorter cruises. On Friday, Carnival updated their return to service FAQ on their website, saying we are also working to expand our testing capabilities at the terminal for vaccinated guests, specifically for our shorter itineraries, three and four day voyages. The notice went on to say, vaccinated guests will be able to meet the pre-cruise testing requirement as part of their embarkation process for a cost of approximately $10 USD per test. But the article goes on to say that at time of publication, there's currently no set date for when Carnival's gonna roll out this $10 testing option. And once the cruise line rolls out this new option, they are still gonna ask that you first try to procure a test on your own before using the $10 option. Carnival Cruise Line guests can currently make an appointment at the pier to get a test prior to embarkation for a charge of $100 per test. The $100 fee is billed directly to you from the provider at the cruise pier, and they accept debit or credit cards. And if you have an upcoming Carnival cruise and you find yourself in a pinch to get that COVID test pre-cruise, I'll go ahead and leave links in the description below this video to where you can order testing directly through Carnival Cruise Line. While you're down there checking out the description box, I want to remind you at the very top, there's a link to the Midships Instagram page. You can also search for us. It's just Midships Cruise. It's a great place to keep in touch with the Midships family. And last but not least, down in that description box, there's also a link to my Amazon Influencers page. It's a fantastic place where you can shop for cruise swag that I take with me on every single cruise. Things like an awesome passport holder, magnetic wall hooks, or even some really nice cruise lanyards. And the best part is even just clicking on the links does help support this channel and my work just a little bit. Okay, so it's time to get back to the cruise news. And unfortunately, there's really no way to sugarcoat this next story. Unfortunately, a Norwegian Crew Lines member has passed away at sea. So let's get the details from CruiseCenter.com. Crew member dies on Norwegian Escape. A 36-year-old crew member has passed away aboard the Norwegian Escape on January 22nd. The crew member had reportedly completed a 10-day COVID isolation. And one day after his release, he suddenly passed away. According to a source on board the ship, the deceased crew member was an Indian national who was working in the bar department. The cause of his death remains unknown. A source familiar with the matter says the crew member was in isolation in a cabin on deck two without fresh air and no sun for 10 days. And we have a quote from one of the fellow shipmates on board. They say, yesterday he was out from quarantine and this morning code alpha was announced on board and he suddenly died. The article goes on to say that currently there are only crew members aboard the Norwegian Escape after the line canceled the ship's voyages with embarkation dates through and including January 22nd. 
The crew member reported that even without guests on board, the company is placing most of them in windowless crew cabins for their 10-day isolation, with only a small number of crew being placed into guest staterooms. The crew member went on to voice his concerns about the effects and consequences that a 10-day quarantine in a windowless cabin amidst other restrictions could have on the crew member's well-being. They said, our mental health after six months on board is starting to deteriorate. This feels like we're in jail, and their excuse for all the restrictions placed on us is that outside is pandemic and it's for our safety. Can you imagine back home, you work in the market and somebody keeps you locked in the same market after you're done with duty because outside is a pandemic? This is how we feel right now. We're not scared of the virus. The symptoms are mild. We are more concerned about all these restrictions, which have a devastating effect on our well-being. The way they're dealing with this situation is unacceptable. The crew hopes that the cruise line will consider the psychological and physical effects of all the restrictions which they've been experiencing since the beginning of the pandemic. And we here at the Midships family would like to send our condolences out to the family and friends and co-workers to this crew member who passed away aboard the Norwegian Escape. And now it's time to get into our thumbnail story today. Will the CDC's changing language on what's considered fully vaccinated have an effect on your ability to cruise? Let's learn more from CruiseHive.com. By Melissa Meantz, CDC fully vaccinated language to change. How will it impact cruising? The U.S. CDC is aiming to change the language used to define if an individual is fully vaccinated against COVID-19 and whether that individual's vaccinations are considered up to date with respect to booster shots. How could this impact the vaccines a traveler needs before a cruise vacation? Since vaccinations against COVID began in late 2020, individuals have been considered fully vaccinated two weeks after completing a two-dose series of an approved vaccine or two weeks after receiving an approved single-dose vaccine. As new variants of the virus have emerged in the ensuing months, however, booster shots have been recommended to augment those initial vaccinations, leading to some questions as to how many shots a person needs to be considered fully vaccinated. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky said in a January 21st press briefing that the language used to describe vaccination will likely pivot to include booster shots as necessary to bring an individual up to date on their vaccinations. Walensky said, in public health for all vaccines, we've talked about being up to date for your vaccination. Every year you need a flu shot. You're not up to date with your flu shot until you've gotten your flu shot for that year. What we really are working to do is pivot the language to make sure that everybody is as up to date with their COVID vaccine as they personally could be or should be based on when they got their last vaccination. End quote. Being up to date on vaccinations then will depend on when an individual last received their COVID injection. That means if you recently got your second dose, you're not eligible for a booster. You're up to date. If you are eligible for a booster and you haven't gotten it, you're not up to date and you need to get your booster in order to be. Walensky explained. Individuals do not become eligible for booster shots until five months after the last dose of their initial Pfizer or Moderna vaccine doses, or two months after receiving a J&J single-dose vaccine. Well, it's possible the language cruise lines use will also pivot to include the additional protection of booster shots. For example, Carnival Cruise Line's health and safety protocols which you can check out at the link here. All these articles are linked in the description below. For example, with Carnival Cruise Line's policy, it explicitly states that should the CDC definition of fully vaccinated evolve to require the booster shot, our policy will adapt accordingly. Carnival also notes that it's possible that certain destinations could also say, hey, you need to be boosted in order to be considered fully vaccinated to come here. Similarly, Royal Caribbean's vaccination guideline states, we strongly recommend that fully vaccinated guests receive a booster dose when they become eligible to do so, though it's not currently required. Because the cruise line follows CDC guidance, however, it is likely that should the CDC change the definition of fully vaccinated to include boosters, the cruise line's policy would also be adapted. And other cruise line's policies are similar and may also be adjusted as definitions from the CDC change. And the article goes on to say that if you're booked with a particular cruise line, it's very important that you stay up to date on their most recent policies. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on these changing policies that may be coming down from the CDC and stepping down to the cruise industry. Go ahead and leave your comments down below. I love sitting down and reading them in the evening. If you made it this far into today's episode, why haven't you subscribed to the channel yet? I'm about to take you on two fantastic cruises in the next three weeks, and you don't want to miss them. Thanks so much for stopping by the channel today, and until next time, we'll see you on the Midships. 